it's Hebby, and it's time for a part two of making every Wings of Fire character as a plush in alphabetical order. I'm hand making over 63 dragons, but there are some rules for who is going to be included versus not, so let me recap them. I won't be making any characters with no visual description. I also won't be making any characters who suck. And I might change around where certain characters are placed, because the alphabet and also the expiry date on packs of chalk chips is just a suggestion. What your relatives at Christmas don't know can't hurt them. I'm putting these patterns up for free on my Patreon, so you can follow along and support me in continuing to make my work if you have the spare gold. We made an albatross plushie in the last video, and you may be pleased if you are a fan of the Royal Sea Wing family to hear that the next plushie is Anemone. I made some changes to her canon design, as I have with all of my plush. She is described as a light whitish blue with pearlescent pink tints, like the inside of a shell. And when I read her description, I imagined a very tropical looking dragon, although in canon she appears more as a sort of pale grey. And in the graphic novel, she has a stronger colour scheme with these dark blue gill covers. Which, by the way, the scale covering the gill opening is called an operculum in bony fish. I changed Anemone to be more reminiscent of a shallow tropical ocean with aqua colours to complement her pink frill. Which is exactly where we start, by sewing up her frill. Something that I think gives the plushies a lot of personality is variations in the spikes slash back sail as you're making them. For Anemone, I gave her an extra tall frill. Anemone is an interesting character. I think she's very polarizing among readers because her first appearance was so charming, but once she was let off her leash, it revealed a, a selfish and imperious streak. She does come good though and give away her treasure and decides not to use her magic to gain power. But for my evilness rating list, I'll give her at least a few points for attempted mass family murder, throw in one for bashing Moon on the head, and one for putting a spell on Kinkajou, one for calling Turtle boring. I love Turtle. Minus one for killing Whirlpool though, I think that was a totally fair move and I'm in the Whirlpool hate club. I stuffed Anemone a little squishier and gave her a 5 out of 10 for evilness. But she's getting less evil, so... Maybe she'll kill a few more whirlpools and have her other points taken off. I'm sewing up her head, making her ears, her horns, and her flip-flaps, including her big blue peepers. Then I put her head on her body and sew her together. Now we are at the leg phase, which is the same always and therefore a little boring, but we do want them to walk. By the way, in my pattern, there's two kinds of legs, longer and shorter. I actually just included both in case someone wanted to make their character short. It's a matter of personal taste and you can use them with any body type. We also sew up her wings, which if you wanted to, you could insert a pipe cleaner or a length of wire into in order to give them posability. But I like plushies to be soft and floppy, especially to hug. And then we have to attach all of her severed body parts starting with the legs. I pin these down first before I ever make a stitch because the arrangement of the legs is quite important and you do want them to stand up easily. So it's good to unpin them and work until it comes together. And she needs toes now also, can't forget the tootsies. Now I'm painting down a base for the glowing scales using fabric paint. And then we're going in afterwards with glow in the dark paint. Fabric paint is super flexible and has a very satisfying smooth soft texture when dry. It's also super glowy when charged fully. But before we test the glowing thing out, she needs some bling and bedazzlements in the form of a string of pinkish pearls which I tie around her neck with embroidery thread. Sea wings would be so great at raves. And now Anemone is finished. She's the most sparkly underwater princess and she's joining the plush army. But like a couple steps away from dear old great great grandpappy. Also. Now the tutorial is out of the way, I'm going to do multiple plushies per video. So our next character is... Orklet! I love Orklet. She's so cute, and her graphic novel design is basically perfect, and exactly what I'm going for here with my plushie draft. Also, more Sea Wing royalty. This whole challenge so far is just this one family. Orklet is very small, as you can see with me cutting out the pieces. I don't include any seam allowance on most of these pieces, except the legs and frill, 
which I sew on the machine right now, but because she's so small, you have to do it mostly by hand. I sew up her tiny spine seam and hand sew the body pieces starting at the neck. Even though Auklet is small, her construction follows basically the same steps as a large dragon. I opted to not give her any weighted beads because of something I'm going to do in the future. But like, qu quite a while in the future, probably like two more videos until I even get to it, Auklet is definitely not evil. She's just a little creature. So she's our first 0 out of 10 for evilness. Good for her. She has teeny little ears and horns and even minuscule sea wing flips, which were borderline impossible to turn right side out. She's like, as long as my palm. So once her head goes on her body, she's essentially a helpless green pea pod. But she can't be limbless forever. It's time to make some legs. I did the straight lines on the machine to save a tiny amount of time, but honestly, doing them by hand is probably just as fast. I also sew in her feet pads for all four of her stumpy little legs. And that one. And then attach them to her body. They have a cutaway section too, so they can form to the pod of the pea. And they also need thigh stuffing whilst we sew. Her wings are super simple. Just sew around the wavy lines and attach. She also has minuscule little glow lines with the puffy paint, so she can't get lost at night. And now for our final dragon, the last one of the A-Team. Arctic! Warning for, not technically spoilers, because Arctic is 2,000 years old in relation to the plot and is obviously very much dead. Also, you know how he dies before you even know his name. But like, I will be discussing it. The Ice Wings are actually probably the hardest ones to make into distinct designs. And even though the Night Wings are black and there's only one shade of black, you can use dark colours like deep greens and violets to communicate a shadowy dragon. Whereas the ice wings? I mean, try and guess which one of these is arctic. We need to take quite a few creative liberties with the designs so that they don't all look like the same white and grey or white and blue dragon. It was this one, by the way, and there are no duplicates in this lineup. I pinky swear. That's just what it's like. I made my arctic design have a light turquoise spine and grey horns. I tried mostly to stick to a very white heavy colour scheme for arctic. The patterns for the dragons are very similar, but since we've reached the first ice wing, I'll explain the difference as we go. I've been sewing the spikes here, but the main trick to this is to put the spikes into the neck after the shoulder point. Because the ice wings have a ruff of spikes on their neck, we want to leave it bare until we make those parts. And now we put the body together, sewing up the sides starting at the neck. Except, when we get to the chest, there is one difference. I don't know if you know this about Arctic, but he's actually a purse. So of course he needs a zipper, which I'm sewing right now. And um, if you, if you can see where this is going, here's your warning for plushy gore. Even though technically plushy gore is stuffing and it's not very, not very horrifying. But you have been warned! When you make plushies that have a zipper, you also have to make the internal cavity, or the plushie will fall apart. I feel like the dragons for A so far have skewed the evil rating a bit heavily towards evil here. You know, I might actually have a hot take on Arctic. He's a complex character who showed genuine moments of compassion, in between being both selfish and a terrible father. Also, his dying words? Banger lines to go out on, at least. We're going to start at 10 points of evil and take points off for glimmers of goodness. Tentatively, I would take a half point away for liking Foe Slayer sometimes, another half point for refusing to kill his son, barest minimum achieved on that one, great job Arctic, a little bit good for worrying about his soul, and he is separated from everything he knows, so let's be generous here and round Arctic down to a 7 out of 10 for evilness, which is not too bad all things considered. I made Arctic a bit out of order after I finished the head base. I did his legs first to ensure his zipper function would work with all the stuffing inside. After sewing up each leg, I attached them carefully and rearranged all the stuffing through his severed neck hole to make sure he came together properly. Now I'm making his ears and horns and sewing them down onto his head base. So, the step after sewing on the face is adding his jewellery. I have the earring base, but a silver narwhal? Could always make one, but I felt like I had something somewhere. This. A handful of loose beads 
shaped like dolphins amid 20 tubs of junk. That's why I've wrapped them like drugs. I'm not losing these again. World's stupidest needle in the world's stupidest haystack. But they totally look like narwhals, though, not dolphins. Their noses are so pointy. Maybe they were meant to be fish? They have scales? Honestly, it's a wash. I'm just putting them on the earring and not thinking about it. To put the earrings onto our plushie's ears, we actually have to snip a line in the middle of the ear, jam the earring in it, and sew the gap by hand. Arctic has two earrings as well. The other is a blue diamond, which was surprisingly hard to find in my bead repository, but now I have it, and Arctic's head is ready to be attached to his body. You definitely need to sew this on before we do any of his spiky things. He has one extra long central spike. Make sure to very firmly attach this down, and two side spiky frill parts as well. I have no idea how Glory made herself that many pointy things. He also has spikes on the tip of his tail. Now he needs wings, of course, which are actually kind of hard to sew because it's all white on white. Very confusing. And after they're attached, toes are the last thing he needs. And then Arctic is finished. This zip feature is going to come in handy once I have a dark stalker to put with them. With that, we have finished the first letter. I can tangibly feel the presence of 60-something other dragons looming in the distance. Also, I dyed my mohawk to look like anemone colours. I suppose I'm committed now. And we're here at the beach because I'm setting her free. Go on, girl. Git. Thank you to my patrons who are supporting me. Please lick and subscribe and join me next time as we spiral deeper into madness.